Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing great today. In today's lesson, we're going to look at other operations as it concerns data files and table spaces. Right? In our previous lessons, we had looked at how to create table space and a few information in that regard. So today, we're going to look at first how to make a table space read only. Now, there are a number of reasons why you want to make your table space to be read only. Perhaps maybe you just want only a select, you don't want any form of DML operations, you know, on the data in that table space. You could decide to make the table space read only. So for this lecture, we're going to create a new table space and then we'll create a table and insert data into the table. And then we'll try to alter the table space to make it read only and then try to insert data again and see if it works. Okay, so let us start the practice. Now to save our time, I've been able to script the, the SQL commands I will be using for this practice. So just follow along as I walk you through the process. So the first thing I want to do is to show user, let's know who is actually performing these operations. You can see is the pluggable database administrator, that's TBS pdb underscore admin we've created this user this administrator rather in our previous video you can check that out right okay so let me just clear this and then the next thing i want to do is to show the current container or show the container we are currently connected to so for that we use the command show con underscore name you should be familiar with that by now if i execute this it shows us that we are connected to the pluggable database TBS PDB. So the next thing we want to do is to go ahead and create the table space we'll be using for this particular practice. So for that, we already have the statement create table space TIS5. So I'll go ahead and execute this. You can see table space TIS5 created. So if I run this query, select table space name, block size, status, content, login, segment space management, compressed for from DBA underscore table space. We're going to see the details of this table space we just created. So if I execute this, you'll see the table space we just created here, TIS5, and then all the details. You can see that right now it is online and it's a permanent table space. It's currently logged in. Segment space management is on auto, right? So these are all the details about the table space. Now, the next thing I want to do again, just to give you more information about the table space is to select from the dictionary view, select all from V dollar sign table space. And then you can see all the table spaces in this pluggable database, including the new one we just created. And then we can also view the data files from the data dictionary. Okay, select star from V dollar sign data file. If we execute this, you see all the data files, their names and everything. Now observe that the naming for these two table spaces that we created previously and today, they're actually different. And that's because we did not specify the data file clause. So Oracle automatically generated a data file name for the data file. You can see. So let me just clear this again. And then the next thing we want to do now is to create a user that will own this schema, this particular table space and create objects in them, right? So we'll create the user with the statement, create user Darima identified by Darima. Default table space is TIS5. That's the table space we just created. So let me quickly run this. User Darima created. Now the next thing we want to do is to grant this user some privileges so that the user can connect to the database and also create some objects in this table space. Okay. So first thing to do is to grant the create session, create table, unlimited table space to Darima. Let's execute this. 
and you can see Grant succeeded. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is to allow the user create a table where she can insert data into the table. So for that, we'll use the create table statement, create table darima dot emp, and then the attributes of the table will follow. So I'll quickly execute this. Table darima dot emp created, right? Now we're going to go ahead to insert data into the table. So we already have three insert statements insert into darima.emp values and then you see the data that we are inserting. We insert and then we commit. One row inserted, one row inserted, one row inserted, commit, complete. So we have the data now. So let's say for whatever reason we want to make the table space read only so people can only select from the, the tables they cannot write to, they cannot perform any inserts, they cannot perform any update, right? To do that, we'll use the alter table space TIS5 read only. So if I execute this query, you can see table space TIS altered. So right now the table space is read only. So if I try to insert again into that table, I will get an error. So to prove that to you, Let's try to insert this. Insert into darima.emp values, and then these are the values. So if I execute, you can see we're having an error. Insert into darima.emp values. File 55 cannot be modified at this time. And then you could see the reason because the table space has been made read only. So to fix this issue, you will alter the table space and make it read write again, right? So to do that, we'll use the command alter table space TIS5 read write. I'll quickly execute. You can see table space has been altered. Now, if I try to insert again, the insert will work very, very fine without any issue. So insert into darima.m and then the values. So if I execute this, you can see one row inserted, commit, complete. So guys, this is how to alter a table space to make it read only or read write. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to show to you is how to resize your data file. Now, as we all know, your data file actually resides in your table space and it's your data file that holds your metadata, right? So sometimes your data file can grow to the point where it becomes filled and there's need to resize it, or you just want to add more space or more sizes to your data file. So how do you do that? For that, let's first of all select all from data file and let's see all the details. So um, I'll execute this. And then you can see that we have two data files that we just created recently. One was created in our previous lesson, and then this one that was created today. You can see the date, okay? This was created today. And then let's take note of the name, because we are going to resize this particular data file, okay? So for us to be able to get the name, you can't, you can't copy this long name from here. So what you need to do is to go to your server, your database server. As you all know, for this practice, we are using a virtual box, okay? So we'll go to our virtual machine, and then I'll try to log in. Now, the first thing I want to do is go to home, and then go to other locations, computer, U01, app, Oracle, Aura Data, OROCL, and then go to the pluggable database TBS PDB. That's what we are working on, right? And then go to this folder, OROCL, and open this particular one. And then you will see two data files. The one we are interested in is actually this one. 
So let me try to open a new terminal here and then try to print the working directory. Now you can see the location of the data file, right? So we're going to copy this location, this entire location. Copy and then come here to where we have our scripts and paste, but that's not all. And then we'll go back to this exit. Okay, and then we'll try to see if we can rename this and then copy this and come back here again, slash, and then paste. Okay, so we now have the complete name of the data file, right? So we can now execute this command, alter database data file, and then give the part of the data file and the data file name, resize by 300 megabytes. Let me clear this result. So if I execute this, you can see the database has been altered. So the size of that data file has been increased to 300 megabytes. Another thing we can do is to add data file. Okay, sometimes when working with um, table spaces, okay, you come across you know certain errors as a result of the fact that your table space is getting filled up. So the two options you have is either to alter the database and resize the data file, or you can add data file to the table space, right? So to do that, to add data file is very simple. Use the command alter table space cis5 add data file, and then this time you are going to give a name to the data file and then give size to it, right? So let's execute this. I'll quickly clear this one. Let's execute this. Table space TIS altered. So we've successfully added another data file, right? So if we execute this command, select all from V$ sign data file, we'll be able to view all the data files we have in the table space. Okay, so from our output, we can see the results. And then we can see the one we just added. So these are um, some basic operations with your table space and data files. Guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was interesting to you. If it was, kindly like it and share it widely. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.